keyword descriptor for Mortemia's work, dimension, and that certainly applies in reference to musical score, but when we consider Krakowice, and feel free to clarify down below if that's a mispronunciation, I'm going to rely for now on the English translation of uh, the Crow's Hymn, or the Crow's Song, it's attributed differently in uh, uh, for places. We have a piece that, upon deeper inspection, becomes even more alluring than what I already can suspect about it, given the Mortemia credit and the Norway slash European rock and metal origin basis. Because you add in a fun layer of excursion that we sometimes take from time to time within the rock or European rock and metal world specifically. Now, to introduce Mortimia to anybody who's not yet been introduced, and this is in fact perhaps your initiate encounter, maybe some of you have taken that journey with me. If so, we have another opportunity on our hands that I've been long awaiting for again with the COVID aftermath sessions, which has been developing quite nicely, and this being the latest feature, I'm more than excited for that. And we've humored a good library thus far, again, the entirety very recently of the uh, previous release, the Pandemic Pandemonium Sessions, but if you've not yet been introduced, Norwegian-based Gothic and Symphonic Metal, uh, one-man project of sorts envisioned by Morton Veland, who really is a, I would say, a metal master, in my opinion, on musical craftsmanship, and I don't apply that loosely, you'll witness why for yourself when you experience, I'm sure, a clock of Visa like we're about to collaboratively. And as I said many times, it's a favorite pastime for me to entertain music here, especially in such grand spotlight, and not only just of a European stock, but abroad, really. It's a first love in my life. I find music to be just such a potent force of creative expression that it's not as much fun to enjoy in isolation. To provide opportunities to enjoy it collaboratively, I think, enriches the process in hopes that perhaps some of you have, can be introduced to groups that I've also been come introduced to, whether it be on my own uh, from years past or through this channel as well, that perhaps we take mutual encounters and deep dives into artists that deserve a grander spotlight, and Mortemia certainly does. So as I said, I gave you a baseline on entrance, and I think you're going to quite like Mortemia if you've not yet humored his, er, er, Morton Veland's work through uh, the Mortemia project. But we're experiencing something rather fresh today on layering with Krakowice, a retelling of European history told in a very creative manner. And we've taken excursions to this in the past, uh, very recently, in fact, on other artists' regards. Let's say, for example, taking pieces of significant European culture or history and retooling them in song form, or maybe in some sort of new uh, telling. In this case, it's being derived from a song. I'm thinking of other types of creative expressions like uh, poetry. For example, D'Artagnan comes to mind, a favorite group of mine, German folk rock, if you're not familiar and you should listen to them, at least my loves in Germany. My origin piece to their uh, the experience with D'Artagnan, I quite love them, but that was a reinvention of a 16th century um, uh forget, a Scottish uh, a poem by Hector McNell. I believe it's the same name, or maybe it's not. Anyway, it, it was done with absolute precision. And now we get to Mortemia doing something quite similar, based on a song, not a poem, but a fun retelling of sorts, and I'm sure the exquisite Mortemia style. And not our last encounter, again, with experiencing European history for music. I've got a couple names on the list here that I know we're coming to quite soon that <laughs> I've said many times, you cannot go wrong with the European market. Just in my own experiences, I've absolutely loved what I've humored in their rock and metal expression. And there's a couple groups here that I'm dying to get to on the history introduction basis. As a history buff, notably uh, familiar with American history, I like broadening out internationally again. And this is a fun way to do it. With Mortemia, we're taking that deep dive with the Crow's hymn, as I said. And as he describes, a 400-year-old traditional Scandinavian folk song retold with the Mortemia ambiance. And as I've also credited with Mortemia, and many of you are experienced to perhaps excursions we've taken collaboratively in the past already know this, I look for opportunities to be better introduced to the European rock and metal market as somebody who very much is an initiate listener who is developing and takes in all your considerations via the comment section routinely and catalogs every which one. And with Mortemia, I've done the same. Utilizing the model of his, again, of sorts, one-man project where it's more of a collaborative basis for him managing the music with a guest appearance from a notable uh, rock uh, singer, typically a, a female artist from, it's been the majority uh, European uh, uh, groups, but there's been some exceptions. In this case, we go back again to the default with our first introduction, perhaps together, to Lindy Fay Hella, who I've not heard of before. She is a Norwegian-based artist from uh, Wardruna, where she, I believe, has present membership on vocals and the bone flute. Interesting. 
typical of Mor with uh, Mortemia, again, as I've said in the past, use him as the initiator of introduction and then take a look at the artist he brings on and do a deep dive of their associated credits later. And for now, catalog them for some later date, and Wardruna will get that regard as well as Lindy Faye uh, Hella. I'll do a deeper dive at some point, but this is our first introduction to her, perhaps together. Maybe some of you already know who she is. Maybe you've listened to Wardruna. If so, welcome. Again, I hope that we have a mixed palette here of familiarized listeners and initiates as well. Maybe you're just stepping, stepping first foot into the European rock and metal sphere. Can't wait for you to have the opportunity as we take it together with an artist that I know will deliver. And I'm sure it'll be quite an exquisite piece, again, with wide dimension and such a robust uh, atmosphere communicated automatically on first tees and temptation with Krakavisa, or the Crow's hymn. This is something incredibly dynamic. Let's welcome it together through the added uh, video clip, he calls it, or the main visualizer. I I'm looking forward to it. And the visualizers have gotten really good with time. I mean, they were in the beginning, but... The last one was like really something special. I know from what I've read on social media posts that Morton and the, uh, uh, Lindy and the people involved with this project put a lot of work into this song in particular. Oh, that's beautiful. Add a crow cue into a song. I've, well, I've seldom heard that, but it works, doesn't it? Her voice is just beautifully meshed with the folk tune. That's the type of tone you're trying to evoke and it perfectly clicks. And here comes the symphonic metal. That's a gorgeous number. This does feel a bit different from Morton, though. There's some fun intrusions that are reminiscent of Tunes Past, but this slower rhythm is... adds on a bit of a fresh aspect to it. It doesn't feel as common. I think it's gorgeous. I might not be able to understand a word of this. <laughs> it's realized with absolute beauty and finesse. Everything is... And the mixture of tones, again, within a symphonic and a darker root is really nice. continues to evolve. This one is a lot more very... I, I think... We're on track five, and this, I think, has the widest field of execution. See, it continues. A refrain, okay. It's beautifully imagined, feels incredibly natural. Of course, it helps when you interweave like crow cues and. <laughs> 
<laughs> that end like yelling, chanting pattern, that worked gorgeously. It just amazes me, again, I consider the entirety of what we've had developed with the COVID aftermath sessions. Five works so far, and out of the group, all the other pieces feel specifically, I loved every single one of them. This is a great collection, as much as like the Pandemic Pandemonium sessions was. Each piece feels locked in a set uh, um, uh, key and organization. And there's even similar tones between works. I'd say maybe, well, actually, this one maybe is closest to, let's say, for example, uh, The Endless Shore. But that's... That one still feels a little more accelerated and aggressive than this one does. This one feels very drawn out and methodically it, 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 it's, it takes its time. It's paced exceedingly well, meshed again with those key variances. And it's funny when you listen to it again, when you listen to as much symphonic metal as I do, there, it's a lot. What you'll win this amongst different songs and artist choices is, again, within the symphonic metal sphere specifically, uh, different adoptions of particular key choices that evoke a, a sense of, I'd say, more tragic, uh, darker, melancholy mood, right? And the song might, again, line up or it might take independent directions, but I've listened to a varied selection of keys. So there's some, when I listen to uh, the Crows hymn, a lot of those come in and they're all mixed together in such a interesting like when you enter it you're like okay you start to get in the groove of again the original key choice it works it's it's lessened it's uh, a bit of a, a lower range and then it, as you see with the song it builds and increases again i've not listened to the crow's hymn in its original form if any has been offered at least publicly i'll have to look and see if i can find that uh, in anticipation of it so this is very much a fresh encounter i should have specified that earlier like i have not in any way approached uh Croc visa at all so I'd be curious to see if that build is, I would imagine it is, maybe that's a Morton Bielan specific choice, if that build is, if it changes, but it works so well when applied to symphonic metal, because it feels like this, uh, um, like a music tasting, of sorts, if you want to call it that. <laughs> Like, you get these little windows of different symphonic keys, but they all interweave nicely because, again, they mimic that set pattern on the riff and the pacing of the song with such vo exquisite vocal delivery on part of Lindy Fahela. Her accent's gorgeous. And it, it, it taps in nicely, again, to the feel that this is trying to articulate with when you present it with a visualizer of that naturalistic image, uh, the scenery of what Morton Veland always delivers on. Everything just clicks with the piece, where it feels like it's it's in such a tight unity. Nothing feels, even with those key ch changes or uh, when there's maybe a harsher uh, emphasis that kicks in a part of the riff, even that worked out really well. It doesn't feel in any way disorienting or uneven. It still blends. And it takes us on this journey that is quite an interesting, I would call it slightly experimental um, uh, evolution in symphonic metal. The way that, again, like I said, set patterns with Mortemia's works in, in years past, not years, well, uh, about a year past when I was first introduced, but in numerous encounters we've taken, again, in, in previous entries, we've explored more static songs that stay in one particular range. Maybe there's some variance, but not much. This really changes. It, it's a bit of a departure, at least on experiences for what I have entertained. Even from him, it feels of or, uh, individual standing. Now, again, I've loved every piece. I'm not trying to shortchange any works, but this one, again, I find to be an incredibly dynamic evolution. That's how I would describe it. It's very different, but it does feel respectful. Even as somebody who's not witnessed, again, the original work, it feels like it commands that honor. And to be clear, I did hear the folk intrusions, the way it originates. Again, even the crows, uh, the, the, I don't know what to call it, but the sounds the crow makes. And that's not a cue I've ever really heard used before, or if it is a very seldom expression within uh, different types of symphonic metal entries, or really any music in general. The set cues on entrance really do tap into, again, that folk rock feel. I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily call it folk rock. Let's just be inclusive and say folk in general. But what the song is going for on entrance and on thesis, again, the original inspirational piece, I feel is well commanded and executed by Morton Veland here. As always, his pieces are incredibly enriched, but... Krakowica, I find it to be something quite special. Even if I can't understand a word, of course, 
as per usual, I do try and translate where offered opportunities for this down below so that you've got a better <laughs> introduction on experience than I have in the moment, but I'll dig deeper of it for sure. I'm, I'm going to easily replay this again as I have every entry from him. It's, it's a beautifully artistic number that, again, I feel is reverential. I, I just hear it in the experience and the way that it is directed and, and how precise it is, whether it be on the score side or, again, the vocal delivery. And Lindy's, Lindy Faye's voice is absolutely excellent. I, I can't wait to do deeper. At some point, again, like I have every other artist to this point that I've gotten to with uh, um, Mortimia's credits and who comes on board uh, with Wodruna that will also apply at some later date to be determined. I'd love to hear, though, for now, what you guys think of uh, Krakowice. If this is, in fact, your first introduction, perhaps, to the song, or if you've been introduced to the original work, does this, in, in fact, evoke the original spirit of the piece in a way that you find reverential? I think it commands it, even if it's somebody who has not personally witnessed said work. I sense it with him. Uh, with uh, Morton Veland's envisionment, I know from him what I'm getting. And if that is your first Mortemia piece, what did you think? Are you enticed to dig deeper? I, of course, would recommend it. I'd love to hear from what angle you approach as well. Longtime fan of his or maybe fresh listener. There's always room for more fans. I'd love to hear about your experience down below with uh, Krakowice. And of course, open door. I cannot wait for more developments off of the COVID after sessions. I've been looking for something eagerly for this and we, again, steadily get new developments over time. And Krakowice, I found to be one of the more dynamic pieces. I mean, I, every entry I've liked on this album has been absolutely great. And the introductions that have come with each piece uh, to so many new artists has been incredibly engaging, whether they be in most cases new, or at least in one case I can think of familiar, uh, that would be in the endless show. I knew about Uli Perhonen going in, but every every artist is a treat, and Lindy uh, Fehela, to get an introduction to her is no different, and again, such a beautiful work. Thank you so much for watching this video. Before you bounce, feel free to drop a like and comment, subscribe to this channel with a ding on the bell, and share this video with your friends. And consider checking out the description here. There you'll find links to my other channels, as well as addresses to my other social media accounts and ways you can help support my work if you feel so inclined. May God bless you, and looking forward to when our paths cross again.